The 2003 Cricket World Cup, known officially as ICC Cricket World Cup 2003, was the eighth Cricket World Cup organized by the International Cricket Council (ICC). It was co-hosted by South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Kenya from the 9th of February to the 23rd of March 2003. This edition of the World Cup was the first to be played in Africa. The tournament featured 14 teams, the largest number in the World Cup's history at the time, playing a total of 54 matches. It followed the format introduced in the 1999 Cricket World Cup, with the teams divided into two groups, and the top three in each group qualifying for the Super Sixes stage. The tournament saw numerous upsets, with South Africa, Pakistan, West Indies and England all being eliminated at the group stage South Africa missed by one run after misreading the Duckworth-Lewis method rules. England forfeited their match with Zimbabwe, due to the political unrest in the country, which ultimately enabled that team to reach the Super Sixes. Similarly, New Zealand forfeited their match with Kenya, due to security reasons which enabled the latter to reach the semi-finals, the only non-test playing nation to do so. Another shock wave came two days after the tournament had started, when Shane Warne, at the time one of the game's leading spinners, was sent home in disgrace after testing positive for a banned substance. The tournament was eventually won by Australia, who won all 11 of their matches, beating India in the final played at the Wanderers Stadium in Johannesburg. This was Australia's third World Cup win, the only team to do so. Topic: Teams and squads. Fourteen teams played in the 2003 World Cup, the largest number of teams to play in a Cricket World Cup at the time. The ten Test playing nations automatically qualified for the tournament, including the recently appointed member Bangladesh, while Kenya also qualified automatically due to their full one-day international status. The other three spots were filled by the top three teams in the 2001 ICC Trophy in Canada, which served as a qualifying tournament. These teams were, respectively, the Netherlands who won the ICC Trophy, Canada and Namibia. This was Namibia's World Cup debut, while the Netherlands and Canada were both appearing in the tournament for the second time, having previously appeared in 1996 and 1979 respectively. The format used in the 1999 World Cup was retained, with the 14 teams divided into two groups of seven, and the top three from each group qualifying for the Super Sixes stage, carrying forward the results they had achieved against other qualifiers from their group. The top four teams in the Super Sixes qualified for the semi-finals, and the winners of those matches contested the final. Topic: Host cities and venues. Topic: <laughs> Group stage tables and results. The top three teams from each pool qualify for the next stage, carrying forward the points already scored against fellow qualifiers, plus a quarter of the points scored against the teams that failed to qualify. Topic Pool A Topic Pool B Topic Super Sixes Australia, India, Zimbabwe, Sri Lanka, Kenya, and New Zealand advanced to the Super Sixes stage. Points carried forward were calculated as follows, four points for a win over another qualifier, one for a win over a non-qualifier, two for a tie or no result against another qualifier, 0.5 for a tie or no result against a non-qualifier. Teams that advanced to the semi-finals are highlighted in blue. Topic: 
Topic: Semi-finals. On a difficult, slow pitch at Port Elizabeth, Australia struggled their way to 212 7 wickets, 50 overs against tight Sri Lankan bowling, thanks mainly to a great innings from Andrew Simmons 91 asterisk from 118 balls, 7 fours, 1 six, demonstrating again captain Ricky Ponting's faith in him. Chaminda Voss, continuing his excellent tournament, took three wickets. Australia's pace attack then ripped through the Sri Lankan top order, with Brett Lee 3 in eight overs taking three early wickets and Glenn McGrath 1 in seven overs taking one. By the time rain arrived in the 39th over, continued tight bowling had squeezed Sri Lanka to 123 7 wickets, 38.1 overs, well behind the target given by the Duckworth-Lewis method. This is the match in which Adam Gilchrist famously walked, despite being given not out. The fairy tale ended for the Kenyan team, the only non-test playing nation to ever make a World Cup semi-final. Sachin Tendulkar, 83 from 101 balls, five fours, one six, and Saurav Ganguly, 111 from 114 balls, five fours, five sixes, batted the Kenyans out of the game as India careered to a total of 270 four wickets, 50 overs. Under the Durban lights, the potent Indian seam attack of Zaheer Khan 3 14ths in 9.2 overs, the experienced Javagal Srinath 1 11th in 7 overs and Ashish Nara 2 11ths in 5 overs careered through the Kenyan top order. Kenya were bowled out for 179 all out 46.2 overs with only Steve Ticolo 56 from 83 balls 5 fours 2 sixes putting up any significant resistance Topic <laughs> final India won the toss, and Ganguly, elected to field, hoping to take advantage of a pitch left damp by dew and rain. On a lively Wanderers Stadium pitch, the Australian openers took advantage of very wayward Indian opening bowlers to get off to a flying start. Adam Gilchrist 57 from 48 balls, 8 fours, 1 six, and Matthew Hayden 37 from 54 balls, 5 fours, shared an opening partnership of 105 runs in 14 overs, forcing Ganguly to bring on the spinners unusually early. The change of pace brought wickets with Adam Gilchrist, who had been swinging at everything, holing out off a sweep shot from the bowling of Harbhajan Singh. Matthew Hayden, looking somewhat better than he had throughout the tournament, soon followed for 37, leaving Australia at 2 125th captain Ricky Ponting, 140 from 121 balls, 4 fours, 8 sixes, and Damian Martin, 88 from 84 balls, 7 fours, 1 six, playing with a broken thumb, completing a partnership of 234 runs in 30.1 overs, an Australian record for one day cricket. Ponting and Martin started efficiently, putting away bad balls but mostly keeping the scoring going with good running, then letting loose in the last 10 overs, taking 109 from them. Ponting in particular dispatched the bowling over the fence with fearsome regularity in scoring eight sixes, the most from one batsman in any World Cup match at the time. The final Australian total of 359 two wickets, 50 overs, at a run rate of 7.18 runs and over, was their then second highest ever in ODI history. India's run chase was made even more difficult after their trump card, Sachin Tendulkar, was out in the first over after skying a pull shot, Glenn McGrath completing the caught and bowled. Nevertheless, Virender Sehwag's 82 from 81 balls, 10 fours, 3 sixes run a ball half century gave India respectability as they maintained a high scoring rate. Their only realistic hope a washout looked a possibility as the game was interrupted by rain with India at 3 one hundred thirds after 17 overs. 
However, this reign passed by, and India's hopes were dashed when Sewag was run out by Darren Lehman, and again when Rahul Dravid 47 from 57 balls, two fours, was bowled by Andy Beichel, ending their partnership of 88 runs in 13.2 overs. India's batsmen continued to throw wickets away in the chase as the run rate crept up past seven and over, and they were finally bowled out for 234 all out 39.2 overs at a run rate of 5.97 runs and over giving Australia an emphatic victory by a record margin in World Cup finals thus far of 125 runs, underlining their dominance of the tournament. Ponting was named Man of the Match and Sachin Tendulkar was named Player of the Series. Controversies Security issues in Zimbabwe and Kenya The security and political situation in Zimbabwe, and the appropriateness of playing there given the misdeeds of the regime of Robert Mugabe was a point of concern before the tournament. Two Zimbabwean players, Andy Flower and Henry Olanga wore black armbands in their opening game protesting against the non-democratic rule in Zimbabwe. Both men subsequently retired from Zimbabwean cricket, and began playing overseas. England faced a great deal of domestic pressure to boycott their match in Zimbabwe on political grounds and did not play, citing fears for the players' safety. The boycott proved costly, as Zimbabwe advanced to the Super Sixes, just two points ahead of England, from the four points they achieved from the walkover. Similarly, New Zealand decided against playing in Kenya because of security fears which would ultimately cost New Zealand a semi-final spot. <laughs> Shane Warne's drug test Australian star player Shane Warne was sent home from the Cup in embarrassing circumstances, only the day before their opening game, after a positive drug test in a lead-up competition in Australia revealed that he had taken a banned diuretic. The leg spinner claimed that he had taken a «fluid pill» on the advice of his mother, 